All right, everyone, welcome back. Today, we're taking a deep dive into the world of modern journalism. And let me tell you, it's a landscape that's, uh, well, it's pretty wild out there right now. Yeah, it really is. We've gotten a ton of requests from you guys to really dig into the pressures reporters are facing these days. And well, the story of Peter DeVries, as detailed in Wicklajoni text, that's definitely a powerful place to start. Right. Absolutely. You know, what's really crucial to grasp is that DeVries' case, it's not like just some isolated incident, you know? Mm. It tragically reflects these uh, these growing dangers that journalists are up against all over the world. Okay, so we're not just talking about one story here, but more like a global trend then? Exactly. Booger Journey text lays out a pretty intense reality, I gotta say. <laughs> Digital misinformation, political pressure. We're talking... Organized crime even is like journalists are navigating a minefield every single day. It's true. I mean, think about it. It's almost as if the Internet itself has turned journalism into this constant, uh, this real time struggle for truth, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. Just the sheer volume of information online. Every second, you've got countless articles, posts, videos. It's all flooding the web. It's overwhelming, even for someone just casually scrolling. Absolutely. Yeah. So imagine trying to do that professionally, trying to separate fact from fiction. It's like trying to find a needle in a, well, a digital haystack, and all while the clock is ticking. That's a great analogy. So how are journalists even keeping up with this insane pace? What are the tools they're using to sift through all that noise and actually do their jobs? Well, they're basically having to become incredibly skilled at uh, at verification, almost like, you know, re real time fact checkers. Wow. So it's not just reporting the news anymore. It's like actively fighting misinformation as it's happening. Exactly. Imagine you're a journalist working on a breaking news story. Right. Mm -hmm. And a source sends you this photo that seems to like confirm some key detail. But then using tools like uh, Google Image Reverse Search. Oh, yeah, everyone knows that one. Right, well, you discovered the photo is actually a manipulated image from, like, years ago, yep. totally unrelated to the current event. Yikes. That's scary how easy it is to be misled. It is. And this constant need to verify, to debunk, to confirm, that's just a core part of a journalist's job now. You mentioned other tools, too, right? Aside from the uh, the image search, I remember something about software that analyzes connections between people and organizations. Oh, right. Yeah, there's Multigo. That one's a powerful tool for investigative journalists. Helps them map out relationships, track down sources, and uncover those hidden connections. So like a digital detective's toolkit. Pretty much. Think of it that way. It sounds incredibly useful, gotta say. But also kind of scary, to be honest. Like, where's the line between digging for information and, you know, invading someone's privacy. How do journalists ensure they're using these tools ethically? Right. That's the uh, that's the constant balancing act. It's one of the biggest ethical debates in journalism today. No doubt these tools are incredibly powerful, but the potential for misuse is, well, it's always there, looming. It's a double-edged sword then. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. You need these tools to cut through the noise, to uncover the truth, but you got to be extremely careful not to, uh, not to inflict any unintended harm Absolutely. And as if that whole digital landscape wasn't enough, there's another layer of pressure coming from, well, from the political sphere. Oh, for sure. That's yeah. a huge factor. Wickle Jenny text really didn't sugarcoat things there, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to censorship and uh, the repression of journalists. You know, Absolutely. They highlighted the situation in Poland specifically where, uh, where journalists are facing more and more restrictions. You've got intimidation tactics, threats of violence even. It's chilling. To think that just doing your job, reporting the facts, could land you in trouble with the authorities. And, well, DeVries' story is a tragic reminder that those threats aren't just empty words. You're right. It highlights the extreme dangers, especially for those journalists who, um, who dare to expose corruption or challenge powerful people. Imagine trying to report honestly under those conditions, knowing that, you know, you could be detained, threatened, or even worse. That takes incredible bravery. It really does. And speaking of challenges, let's talk about social media. It's a bit of a paradox, wouldn't you say? On one hand, it gives journalists this platform to connect with huge audiences. Right, right. But on the other, it makes it so much harder to stand out from the crowd. It's definitely a complex relationship. Yeah. The rise of social media, it's completely disrupted the traditional business model of journalism. Advertising revenue, which used to be like the primary source of funding for news organizations. That's tanked, right? Pretty much. It's plummeted. More and more ad dollars are flowing to those social media giants instead. So newsrooms are facing budget cuts, and that in turn impacts the quality of the reporting they can produce. 
Exactly. Fewer resources means smaller teams, tighter deadlines, and way less time for in-depth investigations. And tragically, some crucial topics might be completely overlooked because, well, because newsrooms just can't afford to cover them. That's a scary thought. It's like this vicious cycle. The very platforms that make it easier to spread information mm -hmm. are also undermining the institutions that, uh, well, the ones that are responsible for producing reliable, high quality information in the first place. It's a real dilemma, and it's one that journalists are grappling with every single day. And then to make matters even more complex, you have this financial pressure coinciding with a rise in organized crime, which adds another layer of threat to the profession. It's like a perfect storm. You could say that. And this brings us back to Peter DeVries who was known for his fearless investigations into the Moroccan Mafia. Yes. DeVries, he dedicated his life to uncovering the truth, even when it meant putting himself in harm's way. His work, it shone a light on the shadowy underworld of organized crime. And his death, well, it really underscores the lengths these criminal networks will go to silence those who threaten their operations. It's a sobering reminder of the risks involved, especially when journalists are digging into those sensitive topics. You know, the ones involving powerful and dangerous people. For sure. And those threats, they extend beyond individual reporters, too. Wickle Joni Text mentioned Cyberbunker. It was this Dutch data center, and it was linked to all sorts of illegal activities. That was the type of stuff DeVries was trying to expose. It sounds like a constant tug of war between those seeking the truth and, well, those determined to bury it. It is, in many ways. That's a lot to process, honestly. Mm -hmm. But... It begs the question, is there any hope for protecting journalists who are facing these incredible threats? Like, what can be done? That's the, uh, that's the crucial question. And thankfully, there are organizations dedicated to this very cause. Oh, really? Tell me more. Well, there are groups like Amnesty International. They're working tirelessly to monitor the situation globally, advocate for journalists' rights, and ensure their safety. They do things like document attacks, provide legal support, and raise awareness about the critical role journalists play in a free society. That's reassuring to hear. It's good to know someone's got their backs, you know. Yeah. Especially in this increasingly dangerous landscape. It's vital work they do. It is. And it's important to emphasize that journalists aren't just fighting for their own safety, right? They're fighting for all of us. They play a crucial role in exposing human rights violations and holding those in power accountable. Couldn't agree more. Their work is a tool for social justice. It's a way to amplify the voices of the marginalized and a force for positive change in the world. DeVries' work, it was a perfect example of that, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. His investigations, like those of so many other brave journalists, they serve as this reminder that the pursuit of truth, it's a powerful weapon against injustice. It's a vital element of a healthy democracy. Well said. This deep dive has been really eye-opening. It's made me realize just how crucial journalism is to a functioning democracy and how much we rely on these individuals to, uh, to hold the powerful accountable. It's true. They're essential. They are. Without access to accurate and reliable information, we can't make informed decisions, participate meaningfully in civic life, or hold our leaders responsible for their actions. It's the cornerstone of a free society, really. It is. So as we wrap up this part of our conversation, what's the one key takeaway you want to leave our listeners with? What's the most important thing for them to remember? I'd say it's this. Information is power. And those who seek the truth, those who speak truth to power, they deserve our unwavering support. Whether it's through subscriptions, donations, or simply engaging with their work thoughtfully and critically, we all have a role to play in ensuring that journalism continues to thrive. Beautifully put. It's been a, uh, a sobering yet inspiring conversation. And I think it's safe to say that we've all learned a lot about the complex world of modern journalism today. Me too. It's a constantly evolving landscape. Yeah. It's true. They really are the uh, the watchdogs, the truth tellers, you yeah. know, and their role in society. Well, it's more crucial now than ever before. They really are. It's like they're holding up a mirror to the world, showing us the good and the bad and challenging us to, you know, to do better. I like that. The mirror analogy. Yeah, it kind of fits. Right. But yeah. with all these pressures mounting against them, like we've been talking about, what can we do? The average citizens. I mean, right. what can we do to support these journalists and protect the uh, the integrity of journalism itself. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Really is. It's easy to feel overwhelmed by the scale of it all, but even small actions, they can make a difference, believe it or not. That's good to hear. So where do we start? Awareness is a great place, you know, just understanding the challenges, the digital manipulation, the political pressure, the economic constraints, all of that. That's a crucial first step. 
Okay, so educating ourselves is key. Hmm. But what about concrete actions? What can we actually do to like directly support journalists in their work? Well, one of the most impactful things is to support reputable news organizations. Subscriptions, donations, even just sharing their articles responsibly on social media, all of that helps them stay afloat. It's like voting with our wallets and our clicks, right? Exactly. Yeah. Choosing to support in-depth reporting, investigative journalism, over, you know, over sensationalism and clickbait. So true. We need to be more mindful of where we're getting our news. We do. And then there's the critical thinking piece, too. We all need to become more discerning consumers of information. Question your sources, cross-check facts, learn to recognize bias, you know, all that. It's like we need to become our own personal fact checkers. Mm. Just like those journalists using Google reverse image search to verify photos, right? Precisely. We need to be active participants in the fight against misinformation. If a headline seems too outrageous or a story feels a little too good to be true, take a moment to pause, verify, think critically before you share it. It's good advice. We can all be a part of the solution. Absolutely. Okay, so we've talked about the threats journalists are facing and what we can do to support them. But I'm curious about the impact this is all having on journalism itself. Is the quality of reporting suffering? Are we like, are we losing something valuable in all this chaos? That's a good question. It does feel like the media landscape is, uh, well, it's pretty chaotic these days. It is. And there's no doubt that these pressures, shrinking newsrooms, tight deadlines, the constant need to generate clicks, it all takes a toll. It's like the nature of the job itself is being reshaped by these external forces. In some ways, yes. But I think it's also pushing journalists to be more creative, more resourceful, more innovative in their storytelling. Oh, interesting. So how is that happening? Well, we're seeing new forms of journalism emerge, you know, yeah. collaborative investigations, data driven reporting, immersive multimedia experiences, all driven by a desire to connect with audiences in new and compelling ways. So it's not all doom and gloom. It's like a uh, a mixed bag, challenges and opportunities all wrapped up together. That's a good way to put it. There are legitimate concerns about the future of journalism. Absolutely. But there's also this resilience, this determination to adapt and find new ways to reach people and tell important stories. That's encouraging to hear. It sounds like despite all the challenges, there's still hope for quality journalism to not only survive, but to actually thrive. There is, but it requires a collective effort from journalists, from news organizations, and from us, the public. We all have a stake in this. We do. It's a fight for truth, and we all have a responsibility to support those who... Um, those who dedicate their lives to seeking it out. I like that. This deep dive has really been eye-opening. It's made me realize just how crucial journalism is to a functioning democracy and uh, and how much we rely on these individuals to hold the powerful accountable. It's true. They're the ones who ask the tough questions, the ones who dig deeper. They are. And it's so important. It is. Without access to accurate and reliable information, we can't make informed decisions, you know? We can't participate meaningfully in civic life or hold our leaders responsible for their actions. It's the cornerstone of a free society. It really is. So as we wrap up this part of our conversation, what's one final thought you wanna leave our listeners with? What's the most important thing for them to remember? I'd say it's this. Information is power. And those who seek the truth, those who speak truth to power, they deserve our unwavering support. Whether it's through subscriptions, donations, or simply engaging with their work thoughtfully and critically, we all have a role to play in ensuring that journalism, real journalism, continues to thrive. Beautifully put. It's been a uh, it's been a sobering yet inspiring conversation, and I, I think it's safe to say we've all learned a lot about the uh, the complex world of modern journalism today. Yeah, it's definitely a lot to think about. Yeah, it really has been, hasn't it? exploring this whole world of modern journalism. It has. You know, what really strikes me, I think, is the incredible dedication of individuals like Peter DeVries. That's true. He never backed down from pursuing the truth, even when he was facing, well, unimaginable pressure and risk, really. He didn't. His story and the stories of, you know, countless other journalists around the world, they serve as such a powerful reminder that, well, that truth matters. It does. And that it's worth fighting for, even when it's difficult or dangerous. Exactly. That's a, the, that's a crucial point, I think. The fight for truth, it's not just for journalists, you know. It's a fight we all need to be a part of. So it's not enough to just sit back and passively consume information. We have to be more active than that. Right. As citizens, we have a responsibility to be informed, engaged, and, uh, and critical consumers of information. We need to understand the challenges journalists face, support quality reporting, and 
well, and demand accountability from those in power. It sounds like it all comes down to being active participants in this uh, this information ecosystem rather than just letting it wash over us. I think that's a good way to put it. And that means, you know, being aware of the ways information can be manipulated, questioning our own biases and and being willing to engage in uh, in respectful dialogue, even when we disagree. It's about more than just reading the news. Then it's about being thoughtful, critical, engaged citizens. Absolutely. And and remember, the battle for truth, it's ongoing. It's a constant process of seeking, verifying, and questioning. It's about being open to different perspectives and understanding that, uh, well, understanding that truth is rarely simple or one-sided. As we wrap up this deep dive, what's one final thought you'd like to leave our listeners with? Something for them to kind of, you know, chew on. I'd say in a world where information can be so easily uh, distorted and manipulated, the role of truth seekers, whether they're journalists, researchers, or just, you know, engaged citizens, it becomes even more vital. We all have a part to play then in ensuring that truth prevails. We do. And, and that's a responsibility we should all take seriously. Well said. A huge thank you to you for guiding us through this complex and fascinating topic. And to you, dear listener, thank you for joining us on this journey. Remember, keep asking questions, keep seeking knowledge, and keep fighting for the truth. Because the truth matters, now more than ever.